Hey, what's up? Really? Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys are from my class, hi, welcome. This is my YouTube channel. I make YouTube videos and I try to make you laugh sometimes. And if you're my regular viewers, hey, Jean. This is the second of my photography series, well, it's history of photography, and today we're going to be learning about the daguerreotype, which I think is how you say it. Daguerreotype. 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 Alright, so today we're going to be learning about the daguerreotype, because that was the first commercially successful photography process, which is my second chapter from my textbook, and that's what this is about. I'm doing two videos at once, which is why I'm wearing the same thing. I don't care enough to change clothes, so there's that. So as we learned in the last one, there was this invention called the camera lucida, and that was a prism that was held on an arm that you look into while you're drawing, and so you can see the paper below you and whatever's in front of you, and so you can almost trace what's in front of you. And, turns out, there's an app for that. What? Stop. Uh-uh. Yes. It's true. How many words can I say in a row? I think I'm gonna stop. I'm done. So one of the biggest things that the daguerreotype did was it totally threatened these painters, these portrait artists, and the art that they did, because the daguerreotype was so fast and quick and easy, quote unquote, it really challenged the skill that these painters had, because someone could just go get a photo done instead of sitting for a long portrait and having to pay a portrait artist for their skill. And so one of the biggest things was that they thought that painting was gonna die. I can't really talk for you and your the state of your being and the state of your mind, but I'm hoping that you know that Painting did not die. There are still painters and drawers and artists. Just FYI. I don't know if you knew that. But while I talk about the daguerreotype, I am going to draw using the camera lucida. The camera lucida app. I am going to draw one of the popular daguerreotypes of that time. And uh, we're going to talk about the daguerreotype and we're going to learn about the daguerreotype. And I'm going to drink some water because these lights are really hot and I'm getting really thirsty. Who wants to learn a little? You? Awesome. No? Bye. Okay, let's go. Okay, so the daguerreotype was invented by Louis-Jacques Mondé Daguerre. I think is how you pronounce his name. Oh wow, this app is really hard to use. Now, they were 2D images with no color, but they had a sort of 3D, 3D properties. And that was because the image literally sat on the copper plate. They also had to be viewed from a certain angle because, because at another angle they would be viewed as the negative. So if you wanted to see the positive of the image, you had to be viewing it head on. And they had sort of a glossy surface, so they were also very shiny. They also required like a really long exposure time and so the people, the sitters or the people that were getting their photographs taken, they would have to sit for minutes upon minutes and they actually had to in some cases have their heads clamp down and that's why you see them looking so somber or upset because they even were drugged sometimes or gassed even. This really hurts my back. First of all, let's take a moment and appreciate my uh, setup I got here. I mean, this is pretty high quality. These uh, books stacked like that, I mean, there's professional and then there's me. Try to keep up, people. Try to keep up. So, especially in America, the daguerreotype really hit off as a business. It was like the new thing, like the new hit thing. It really provided a lot of unemployed people with a new opportunity. So studios were created where people could go get their portraits taken and they usually had the option of like one of a few positions that you could take a photo in. Doesn't that sound familiar? <clears throat> Sears portraits. <clears throat> Ugh, sorry, I don't 
I don't know. So after a while, portrait artists, like painters, they actually took jobs in the studios. They would either be operators or they would do like paint touch-ups on the final images. And then after that, daguerreotype saloons were developed and those were like these little horse-drawn carriages and they would go from town to town and they would take photographs of locals there. So they would come out with, with something in the newspaper saying that they were in town. And then after the first couple people, they would just run off word of mouth and they would just take photographs of local people, usually with their prized possessions. They would usually pick whatever means the most to them and take a photograph with it. And then after they pretty much photographed everyone, they would just pack up and go to the next town. People became really fond of getting their photo taken and they would get really excited. They would take photos with whatever meant the most to them. They would get in their best outfit, they would make sure they were looking their best, and they would take a photograph because it was the best thing ever. People, this was the invention of the selfie. Oh my gosh. Now I know they weren't taking the photo themselves, so I guess it really isn't a selfie, but think about it. They would make sure their hair is all looking nice, they would get with their favorite thing, they would get so excited, they make sure it's perfect. Come on guys, these people were taking a freaking selfie. They would make sure their eyebrows were on fleek for that shiz. All right, I'm done. All right, so this was my, oh, it's upside down. This was my final image, I know. It's awful. This was my favorite photograph so far in the textbook because we learned about how these people would take photographs with their favorite objects, their prized possessions. They would get so excited to take a photo with it. And this dude freaking took a photo with his butterfly collection. I want to be his friend. So I didn't get into much detail on the drawing because I'm not going to lie to you, the position I was sitting in while drawing was so uncomfortable, my back hurts so bad. But that app is so cool. I'm totally not sponsored by the way. It costs four dollars, but that app is so cool. I'll put a link to that in the description. And that's, that's it guys. That's the daguerreotype. That was the invention of the selfie and the invention of the vacation picture. It just, it opened up a whole new world to how we perceive the world in front of us and our appreciation of everything in front of us. So I spent a lot of time and money on these two videos. So I really hope I get an A. You guys in the comments below, you guys should tell my professor to give me an A. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button right over there and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all that good stuff. I am Alex Freed on all those things and I update them all the time, especially Twitter and Snapchat. All right, well, I am going to go study some more and edit these videos and I will see you guys next week. I love you guys. Bye.